Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another raid Shadow Legends video, and we have got the fusion done already. I say we, it's a royal we. Kalari's done it. I'm still waiting on Necro Hunter, so I'm going to be a little while. But firstly, thanks to Kalari for letting me jump on his account, play around with this champion so I can get the information out to you guys as quickly as possible. Basically, to let you know, is it worth your time? Is it worth your time, your investment in resources, uh, all that type of good stuff to fuse this champion? Um, I also want to thank, I must have had about 15 people message me already today and say, do you want to jump on mine? I've got one ready. I know you can't do it. Do you want to jump on? So thanks, guys. Um, let's have a look then. So what we're going to do in this video is test her without books first, then with books. We're going to try pretty much anywhere in the game and um yeah see how we get on so let's see her in all her glory kalari's done an initial build as i say we've not put any books into her yet so we're going to see what she's like um without books a few people have said in my initial kind of fusion info on this passive actually i'll get to the skills in a minute but i think i got something wrong in my initial kind of reading of the passive so attack one enemy two times on array one the double hit's always nice each hit's got a 40% chance of stealing one random buff. Kind of cool. Good for swiping the buff off the clan boss. Because um, it's each hit. So two, two chances of getting a 40% steal. Um, if you're in something like the arena and somebody's got two buffs, you've got a chance of stealing both of those buffs. Um, so this feels like it's a pretty nice move. Certainly brilliant for faction wars. Brilliant for the arena. And kind of nice for clan boss. You can push it up to 60% as well. So that's a pretty high chance of stealing at least one buff. Nice, nice uh, defense based as well. So that's cool. Uh, A2 attacks all enemies. Each hit, three time, uh, three hit. Each hit's got a 50% chance of placing one of the following debuffs. Block buff, decrease attack, decrease speed, weaken, decrease accuracy, and heal reduction. Now, if we're thinking clan boss here, you've got two of the strongest debuffs in the game in this move decrease attack and weaken so that's insanely good if you are like i don't know hard moving on to brutal nightmare clan boss this is brilliant because you've got somebody else that's throwing out debuffs that are useful but she's also going to put on three potential debuffs you don't want so de uh, decrease accuracy heal reduction and block buffs block buffs kind of like semi okay um, I guess if you're on like the affinity clan bosses, but the other two are pretty trash. In fact, total trash. They're just wasting debuff space and decrease speed won't land at all on clan boss. So um, there's five potential going to land on clan boss. Two of them are very strong. One's average, two are bad. So she's not going to be your decrease attack champion. But if you don't have one and you get her, then it's kind of like a not a bad safe, safe spot to be. If you book her up, and it's quite a few books here, what, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten books in total, quite a few, but not as bad as a lot. Um, if you book her up to get the reduced cooldown, that's coming on every three turns, and you don't need decrease attack on for the, um, for the stun move. So it's potential to have decrease attack on from this a majority of the time, however, it's not consistent. Um, because it's RNG. So 75% chance if we book it out. I do like this move. And it blends really nicely into this move. So decreases each enemy's accuracy by 10. For each debuff they're under. Pretty cool. Um, pretty cool but not game changing I'd say. Uh, this champion will receive 4% less damage. For each debuff on the attacker. So she's if she's throwing out 2 or 3. You pair her up with somebody like a Draco or somebody like a Tomb Lord. Tons of debuffs going out there. So this champion will receive a ton less damage. That's kind of cool. Um, heals this champion by 1250 HP each time a debuff expires. That's pretty cool. You're going to get a ton of debuffs. If you put her with a team with debuffers again, there's going to be a, a ton of stuff going off there. Um, has a 75% chance of placing a Provoke debuff for one turn on enemies under five or more debuffs at the start of this champion's turn. So I misread that. I'm, I read that as enemies that have got less than five. Um, but what they're saying is for enemies that basically, when they've used the word under, they mean that have got on them. So kind of weird 
text there. I'd say that's not clear text to me. It probably was to everyone else. It wasn't to me. Um, so anyway, so if they've got five or more debuffs, then she can provoke them, basically. So you do want to push her out with people with a bunch of debuffs. This champion can place debuffs on weak hits. I love this. That's actually a game changer. First champion we've had that I know of that can do that. So really love this. All in all, good passive, good kits, very high base defense, good, good base speed, good base HP, um, and the rest of the stuff is pretty decent. So what we've done here in this build initially, or what um, Kalari's built initially, is kind of like a, a damage test. So we've foregone uh, the accuracy. We just pushed up crit damage, defense, speed, defense on all the jewelry items with crit damage. So we're trying to push out in savage gear. Savage ignores defense, high defense, high uh, like max crit rate, and then high crit damage. So we're going to just see without books what sort of damage output we can get. And really, with with books. You get debuff chance, you get a tiny amount of extra damage here, you get a bit of extra damage here. I'd say the only reason really to book her is to improve the debuff chance, not really to increase your damage. Um, in terms of masteries then, we've gone again a damage build. So we've got Helm Smasher as the main mastery with a defensive tree. So this is kind of like a dungeon nuke or arena nuke setup. All of the gear, all of the, the kind of masteries are around nuke. So that's where we're starting. We're like, how hard can we make a hit? We're, we're going to pair her with... I mean, look at this account, guys. <laughs> look at this account. We're going to pair her with Sifi because Sifi's going to bring us all of the buffs in the world. But one of the main ones I like is increased defense. If you've got somebody like this that is defense-based, if you increase the defense of your team, then she's going to hit harder, basically. It's, it also increases her damage. So we're going to do more damage with that. I'm going to bring in somebody to drop um, their defense and weaken. And then we're just going to start slamming people and see what sort of damage we can do as a first point. Let's do it. So I think a good place to test damage potential is going to be in the dragon. And I'm literally, I'm pushing this as hard as I can for damage. So I want somebody with a defense aura that's going to give me increased defense uh, for our lead, which is going to be, uh, that's for arena. I was hoping Tomb Lord actually might be able to do that for us, but he doesn't. Um, we can do something like a Tyrell. That's cool. Oh, do we want to? Yeah, we're going to do that. I'm just going to get myself a defense lead so I get more damage out of this build. We're going to do Draco for drop defense and weaken. We're going to do Seafy, the busted, for our increased defense on our team. That one. And then, obviously, we're going to bring her in for... Ideally, we're looking at damage. So she's the good affinity for Dragon. Um, and then I think I'm going to bring in... I might just bring in Bad L as well, just to boost our damage even more. One, eight, one. Let me just see what her speed is. I want, to, I want to make sure she goes last. So I'm just going to have a quick play around with Bad L. Just speed him up for a minute. Anything we'll do here, really. That'll do. So, Badel goes in. Badel's now faster. So, we're going to get all of the debuffs and everything up before she gets a turn. Let's see what we do. Let's see what we do. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm hoping that she's got some good multipliers. So, she's not built to have massive accuracy in this setup. So, we're going to increase our defense. We're going to increase our damage by putting poison out. We're going to drop defense on them. Put more debuffs out there. Sleep someone. Um, right, drop defense and weaken. So currently we've got four debuffs on everyone. Um, and let me just check a passive again. Four debuffs on everyone. She needed five to get that, that passive off, so we'll, we'll test that in a minute. Um, she'll take less damage for each debuff, but she doesn't do any more damage for debuff. So it's just this is just about her damage now. Let's go. What are we going to hit? I think that's... 30 to 40k per hit, and it's a triple. That's 120k damage we've just done on everybody there. This is an insane build, guys. If she was booked, I think that's one shot in some of these guys. I think that's a one shot. Um, that's some pretty nasty damage multipliers, guys. <laughs> that is some pretty meaty stuff going on. Um, 
God, this Draco's going ham as well. Let's just CRA one then. Tons of debuffs up. Didn't get a passive off for the Provoke. Uh, let's just see what we're doing on the A1. 41k on the A1 for the crit. Let's go again. Drop a bit of turn meter here. Not going to have the bad L um, buff on right now. Actually, we've got a little turn to go yet. So let's just work through some of these turns. She's got a little bit of time anyway. She had debuffs are going to wear off before that. It's okay. Poisons go up. Weaken and decrease defense goes out. Get our buffs on. So we've got one more turn here. We're going to go A1 first. Let's go for someone who's perhaps a bit squishier. Attack based champ. See what the A1 does. Double hit. 60k per hit. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. Okay. Don't need to do any of that. Haven't seen her passive proc yet. And I'm, maybe I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Get some more debuffs out. Oh, actually, we've got Provoke there. We do have a Provoke here. She's the only one in there that can be doing that. So that's got to be her. Sleep him. Another Provoke. Yeah, here we go. Provokes all the way around. Look at that. Provokes all the way around. So it was a, um, that was a 75% chance of landing that. We got it on all of them. That's very cool, guys. A defense-based champion that's sucking in all that damage is very cool. Let's see what we do on this one. I'm going to slow it down to one turn. What sort of damage we got here? 30 to 40k per strike. She's in crazy gear, guys, but that's good damage. Uh, and on the dragon, uh, I guess maybe we just see see what she's doing in terms of throwing debuffs out. She's not going to be the damage here. 25k per hit with nothing on, no decreased defense and stuff. 47k out when decreased defense goes up, plus the bad L passive. And obviously, she's going to get the random chance of a uh, A2 if we get round to it. Should be a next turn, I think. Let's just see what we land here. Triple hit. Didn't land anything. She doesn't have enough accuracy, I guess. But anyway, guys, so in terms of actual raw damage, she's got good multipliers here. You know, that she's hitting for, uh, on waves, she's hitting for similar sort of numbers that you see raw guards hitting for. Um, she won't be doing that as, as high on, on bosses because she doesn't have the same sort of max HP multipliers, but damn, that's that's pretty good going. That is pretty good going. Right. Let's try somewhere else. So next thing we're going to do is try the same type of build, but in the arena. Um, again, without accuracy in the build, so we're just going for pure damage right now. And in this one, we're going to go increase our defense and put our, our shields up. We're going to drop their turn meter and speed us up. We're going to drop their defense and here comes the triple. So we're not going to land these debuffs probably, but let's see how easy we deal with our rotors. Let's slow this down. See how easy we deal with, you know, someone that's tanky like the Tormund. This is Plat Arena, by the way, guys, so it's, it's no kind of slouch in terms of who we're up against here. Let's go. Oh, it's nice. It's pretty much... It's not far off Ethos um, damage potential. That's not far from an Ethos damage nuke right there on that A2. It's nice, guys. That is nice. Um... It's nice, but not, like, totally busted, I'd say. Not totally busted. Like, Rotus is totally busted. Um, in terms of the way he's, he gets all of his stuff back. Um, who are we going to go for? I don't really want to go for a Hegemon team, really. Let's try this one. So, let's go the same setup again. So again, we've got a tanky person here. We've got a kind of squishy person, squishy person. Let's see what we can do. Obviously, with Seafy, they're busted in the team as well. Nobody else gets a go. Drop their defense. Let's see what we've got. Triple hits. We can't get weak hits ever. We can't ever get a weak hit. So your crits can never be a non-crit. Oh, it's 
pretty good, guys. So although this tank actually didn't take that much damage, she was negative affinity. Maybe I'll check that. Did we get did we get weak hits? Am I mis miscalling that? Let me just check this again. This champion can place D oh it can get weak hits, but places she will never um not be able to place a debuffs basically. And we did get some debuffs out here. Look at this. We've got a couple, but not a lot. 29k A1 though. That is strong, guys. That is strong. So she can place weak hits on enemies. Um, but they won't stop her doing her debuffs. So yeah, so actually Duchesses have really good counter to her. Duchess, and it's good to have that. I want... You want counters in the game to any champion. You don't want a champion that's just busted. You want counters out there. She... She's going in pretty ham. Sleep her. Sea feed coming out crazy again. 18k without any sort of drop defense. Yeah, okay, man. So, and obviously we've got drop defense on us. So, that's, again, something you've got to be aware of. You know, drop defense is going to weaken you it's going to weaken your damage um okay cool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just put an accuracy banner on her and then we're going to throw her into the spider and test there so at the moment we've got defense banner for damage we're just going to switch this now to an accuracy banner uh we'll just take one that's free <laughs> you've got one sitting around with just 18 speed on it for jokes so we've got enough accuracy now to deal with the spider uh, we're going to keep the rest of it as a damage defense build. This is a great thing about defense-based champions. Their damage is also the way they stay alive, which is nuts. So let me just work out a spider comp here. Obviously, it's not my account. I don't know exactly what we've got. So let's just have a look. I'm not going to do this kind of crazy comp. We're going to see if we can get something a little bit different. I'm going to play around, and then I'll, I'll bring you back in. Okay, we're going to try something a bit funky. Um, I guess I don't really have a lot of turn meter drop there. Let me just see if we've got someone that can do that. Might just have to be this. So what I'm looking for is an HP burn kind of strat. I think I might just do too much damage. We'll see. We'll see. We might end up doing too much damage with the build we've got on her. But ideally, I think for anyone who's fusing her that perhaps doesn't have Spider down, she will be a brilliant Spiderling tank. Uh, so we get decreased defense and weaken on first with our Tomb Lord. We can just get our shields up with Miscreated. No surprise here. Now, we've already got a bunch of debuffs out there. She can then go with a triple hit debuff. You see these debuffs just going up like insane amounts. Um, we've got a couple here. We've got the decreased speed on the, on the main spider. We've just got a bunch of different assortments of debuffs out there. We just need to get him to increase his attack first. So we'll do this. We probably save that a minute. So yes, yeah, so she's obviously going to be the Spiderling tank. Um, all we need to do is pick someone that's half health and then we can spread a load of poison from Tomb Lord. Bang. And now all of a sudden, every time she gets a turn, we should get pretty much all of the Spiderlings provoked into her. And obviously she's got massive defense pool. So uh, in... Look at that. Look how many provokes are out there, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight provokes out of like the ten spiders that are there. Nuts. He's hitting for an okay amount anyway. Then obviously we get our HP burns out. And that's just that's your strat, really. It's the HP burn strat. HP burns are doing gonna do the damage. The only thing is you if you make a hit as hard as we are, there's a chance that they're not gonna burn as much as they should. I'll let this run through. You see how quickly they're dying. But still, guys, in terms of Spiderling tanks, I don't know of many better. Drexar's up there. Um, you know, Razin can do a job. Look, every time these these um, debuffs wear off, she gets a heal back. So I wonder even, maybe we try it without Miscreated. Let me just try it without the big shields. Because that's not what everyone's got. Let's see if we can do that. Second. Let's get rid of this big shield. Let's put in... 
perhaps just some of the speed. I'll put an arbiter then I can just hit full toe. Because she'll activate him. That's arena anyway. Right, okay. Oh, actually, so that's arena anyway. So she does have an aura. She's got an accuracy aura, increased 60 for everyone in all battles. It's actually pretty solid. It's pretty solid, especially if you are earlier game. Especially if you're earlier game. It can mean you don't need to wear banners. So let's see what we do then. Full auto, no shield for a miscreate monster. Um, you could easily re replace the cold heart here with a um, armiger. We throw a load of debuffs out. Let's slow it down a minute. Obviously, the, poison, uh, the burns go out. Tomb Lord won't do his job properly though. So she is taking it up. Every time something drops off, she heals. Tomb Lord gets his poisons out. So now she should provoke everyone, even though she's going to tank him anyway. But look at her heal. Look at her heals, guys. Look how much she's healing in between turns. I'm not sure I've seen anyone deal with Spider as well as this. And obviously, because there's more debuffs on him, her passive means she's taking less damage. She is a Spiderling tank supreme. Like, I've not seen anyone as strong as that. Not seen anyone even close to that. You can almost actually just forget that she's got debuffs in her kit. The debuffs in her kit here... Um, I guess she's spreading, like, decreased attack, which is going to reduce the amount of damage you take. But the D... Yeah, the debuffs in her kit are not what's causing her to be strong here. Look at all these provokes out again. Just healing up. All those all those um, debuffs dropping off. She's healing up. I actually love it. I love the kit. I, I really like the kit. If her A2 didn't have that kind of RNG element, she'd be much better. But also, she'd be probably busted. So, I think they've done a good job. I think if you've got a chance to fuse her, you should absolutely fuse her. Look at that. Really cool. Really cool. Makes the um makes it the screen a little bit laggy. If you're struggling with, with that, then that might be a bit of a problem for you. Um so I think I mean she's definitely strong dragons, strong spiders. Let's try and fire knights. Same build. So what have we got going on here? All sorts of craziness. I guess she just does this. She's the right affinity here as well. So, so far, she's actually the right affinity everywhere. She's the right affinity to Spiderling Tank. She's a strong affinity on Dragon, a strong affinity on um, Ice Golem, and she's a neutral here. So, there's not really anywhere she can't go. She's strong in the arena, um, but not busted in the arena. She's obviously throwing out debuffs here. She's going to have a double hit for the Fire Knight boss. And a triple hit. So she's got all of her moves are multi-hits. So Fire Knight, she's going to be strong. I think they've done a really good job of balancing her to be just relevant anywhere. The one place I'm not sure about fully is Clan Boss. But we'll try that in a minute. There goes that triple hit. Massive damage. Debuffs there. Block buffs. Uh, block healing. So obviously block healing can be useful for the boss here. Pretty much, apart from block buffs, all of her debuffs are useful here. But the only thing she doesn't have in her kit is like an inbuilt turn meter reduction, but she does have the um, she does have the reduced speed in her choice of like debuffs that she could land i think she's got to do it now is she yet yeah. what do we land block buffs and decrease attack just strong guys i'm really really impressed with this champion really impressed i know she's in good gear here don't be um put off by the fact that she's in good gear i i can't really show her not in good gear here um what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh twist her build into a lifesteal build now and we're going to try her in Nightmare Campaign. And then lastly, we're going to try her in Clan Boss. So I'm going to do a quick change up and then I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I've tried to find some of Kalari's less insane gear. 
So what I've done is I've pulled on a bunch of lifesteal gear um, to see how well she deals with Nightmare Campaign. Now, I mean, it might be possible. I've, I've left the masteries the same, by the way. I'm not going to change the masteries because obviously Kalari's book got them built in the right way for him. She's going to have a negative affinity here. With Nightmare, yeah. She's going to have a negative affinity there. Um, but we're going to try it anyway. Let's just try alongside some food and see if she can deal with Nightmare Campaign. A lot of people struggle hard on Nightmare Campaign. She's still going to be difficult to do anything against the Valk levels, which I know some people really find difficult. Um, but let's just see what she does here. So life still gear, more ordinary gear, still good, but more ordinary. She doesn't have that decreased defense in her kit, so I'm wondering if she's going to be able to do it. It might be that she actually needs to be in kind of mental gear to be able to do this. Because her AoE is probably just... Maybe when she's booked on a three-turn cooldown for her AoE. But without the three-turn... Got a counter-attack there. Some debuffs off, which gives her a chance to heal. Yeah, so if she wasn't in lifesteal gear, she would already be dead. She's kind of getting through it. This Actually, this whole wave is negative affinity to her, which is not helping. I don't know, guys. I mean, she's soloing a wave of negative affinity champs. Stealing uh, the block debuffs. She generally, so she's not booked. She's generally getting like two debuffs off a time. So she's going to get into the second wave, which has got like a mixture of strong and weak. Full health now after that first AoE. Lure might be a problem because she'll start dropping our turn meter. Now we're good. Back to full health. Okay. So, for those struggling to do Nightmare Campaign, she's a definite choice. Because imagine it, you're going to be pairing her with someone else. You know, if you pair her with an apothecary or someone that can um anyone that can heal or speed her up or create shields or just create you know stun effects or maybe like a tail rail to drop defense alongside her um you'll find that actually she can come in and do a work do some work for you here my dogs are going crazy in the background <laughs> But yeah, I mean, she's a definite option. A definite option for Nightmare Campaign. She's in, she's in good gear, but not crazy gear here, guys. I mean, it's not fast, by the way. But then most people, once you've done Nightmare Campaign, you'll probably never come here again. So she's not going to be like a speed farmer for it, but she can do it. She can do it. And um, the first wave where there was a load of negative affinity, it was kind of like pretty tough, but... Since then, it's actually been not bad. Bit hairy at the start. Okay, three minute clear of 12-6 Nightmare Campaign. Quite nice. As I say, if you threw her in with... Maybe we just try it quick. Um, if you threw her in with a Tyrell... Dropping defense. I uh, don't know if he's in life still gear or not, actually. It's fast enough. I'm not sure if he's in life still gear. We'll just try it quick. If he's not, he's not. But what I'm going to show you, like, defense goes down first, and then you start doing a, a bunch more damage. She's obviously tanking it up because she's the negative affinity in this first wave. It's taking some pretty big hits. Yeah, it's probably just a bit too, a bit too risky. Oi. Nah, she's gone. Okay. You gotta test these things. You gotta test these things. Okay. So last place I'm gonna try then is gonna be Clan Boss. Clan Boss. And again, we've still not put any books into her. We've got an affinity change already. Um this is 
Ah, uh, yeah, it must be an unkillable team here. So I'm just going to try it, not in an unkillable team, but we're going to go with like a Cfi. I'm going to go with a strong team. Uh, I don't know how everyone is geared. That's my problem. But I think I'm going to go with something like this. Let's just see what we've got here. No one's. I don't know who's speed tuned or what. So we're just going to go with my gut instinct on some champs. Decrease attack. Massive counter attack. Um, I'm going to take a C fee just for like the increased defense. We're going to take a Draco to drop their defense and weaken. And then we're going to bring her in. So if you're running her in clan boss, depends how you want to play her. If you want to do, if you want to try and get her to do those debuffs, then you run accuracy in a banner. If you just want her to come in and do damage for you, and do some of that kind of self-healing, um, you know, mitigation, all that type of stuff, then you actually would take the accuracy banner off and you would just run her as a damage dealer. So I guess you've got two options there. I don't think her debuffs are strong enough to warrant her going in as, you know, like your decreased attack champion or anything like that. So I do think if you're going to bring her in, don't forget as well, I don't have masteries on like Warmaster here. I'm just, just running like the set that he's already running. So there's definitely more potential in damage here. But if you're going to bring her in, I would probably run her without the accuracy banner. And just have her doing um, general hits. She's actually one of those fairly unique champions where she probably would benefit from... I wonder if she'd benefit from Giant Slayer. Because she's only got two abilities. One's a three hitter, one's a two. If you've got her second ability off on an extra turn cooldown, she'll be having two, four, five, six, seven hits for every three turns. I don't know, guys. Someone do the math down below. Giant Slayer or Warmaster? What are we saying? I think she might be a Giant Slayer champ. I think she might be a Giant Slayer champ. Um, I'm just going to actually, I'm going to do some working out while this is running through and then we'll bring it back in. So yeah, guys, I've just done the workings on it. It is better to have Giant Slayer on her ability. So Giant Slayer, she's going to get seven hits with a 0.3 chance um, of landing versus in, in a three hit cycle um, versus War Master, which is three turns with a 0.6% chance. So Giant Slayer is actually the better um, mastery on her for clan boss and if you just wanted to do like damage in dungeons. Um, so it's interesting. She's one of the few actually that's got a two hit A1 that would be better off with Giant Slayer. So guys, I'm going to end, end turn here. We're not seeing anything too spectacular. I just want to see what her damage looks like compared to the others. Bearing in mind she's got Giant, um, she's got Helm Smasher on here, not, not Giant Slayer. So... We can add another kind of chunk of damage on, but she's done 1.278. So she's probably in line with, you know, like a Valkyrie damage set, a Sepulchre damage set. So she's in line with really another defense-based champion for Clan Boss, which is fine. Uh, it's not bad. It's not amazing. I'd say Clan Boss is not like her strongest place to play. So guys, we're going to do it. We're going to throw the books on. Um, I actually don't think this champion needs to be booked. I don't think she needs to be. I don't think you need additional chance to land those debuffs on the A2. I don't think you really need additional chance to steal buffs on the A1. I think she's strong as she is. You're going to get a tiny bit more damage out of her. The only thing I do like about booking is this reduced cooldown. Getting that AoE back a turn sooner for things like dungeons, arena, um, spider is going to be useful. But other than that, I don't know that she's needed to be booked. Um, we're going to see now just what sort of damage potential we can get out of her. So I'm just going to flip back to the, the defense-based banner. And we're just going to see when booked. Uh, maybe we do it in that dragon run, actually. The first dragon run was quite nice to see. We were hitting basically between 30 and 40k hits with that setup that we did. Let's go back to that. And just see, booked up, you know, what are we seeing? What are we doing instead? Is it worth her books? 
This is what we want to know. Is it worth your books? Sleep someone. Decrease defense and weaken. Right, okay. Here we go. Slow it down. Is it worth our books? Oh, I've changed our gear. <laughs> I've changed our gear. Let's try that again. <laughs> she still hit pretty hard, 25 odd Ks with this um, puny lifesteal gear on. So that says something. Uh, right, let me just find that gear that we were wearing before. <laughs> I was thinking to myself then, what is going on? Why she hit so much less? <laughs> now she's got books. It's like the answer is don't book her. All right, let's find it. Savage gear. Get her back as we started. Uh, which piece was it? I'm not even sure. Must be looking for crit rates. Crit rate and some speed. It's got to be this one. Uh, what's that? 86, 94. Good. I guess it must have been this one. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try that again. Take two. Take two. This could go with my bloopers. Real. What is she going to do? Take two. So let's just auto it up to get the abilities all off. Okay, what we got? What we got? So we jumped up. We've probably jumped up a few thousand. A few thousand per hit. Per hit, which is a lot of damage actually. Over the course of smacking five people, each of them three times, you're gaining an extra few thousand per hit. You get it back quicker. That's all I care about. The extra couple of thousand per hit. In the scheme of things, is nothing really unless you're end game. But getting that ability back quicker, I do like. So it's a tough one, guys. I would say, unless you've got plenty of books, don't book her. Um, if you've got plenty of books, fill your boots, get yourself a bit more damage, and get this move back faster. That's some. That's the thing I like. Um, right, I'm gonna go in and do the actual review of her now, just to just to wind up the video. Um, yeah. So far, faction wars. I think she's going to be absolutely top draw. Stealing buffs, throwing out uh, debuffs, tanking up a load of stuff, taunting, brilliant. And within that kind of um, barbarian faction, actually they needed a little bit of love. So brilliant for faction wars. Clan boss, I think she's too RNG for me to be top tier. I think she'll be decent, but not top tier. Um, for those that have just like fusing her and you are less than nightmare, I think she'll be exceptionally good. For those that are already playing Nightmare and up, you've probably already got something stronger than this. Um, campaign, I think she can do Nightmare Campaign. There's not that many that can, but she's not going to be like your campaign farmer. Um, arena Offense, I think this rating so far is low. Uh, I think she is strong, strong, strong in the arena. I really think that's one of her best places. Same with Defense. You know, she can sit waves down, she can sit down a Rotus, and she can take a slap and not even worry about it. I think she's really strong here. Um, void keep. Um, she'll be fine in the void keep. Force keep. She will bring a weaken. She doesn't bring a decreased defense. I think she's kind of reasonable. Magic keep. She will be able to um, to steal the magic keep's buff. So top tier. Spirit keep. She's got the ability to put decreased healing on. Re heal reduction. Top tier. Ice Golems, um, she didn't test Ice Golems yet. I think it's not going to be her strongest dungeon, but she'll be able to do it. Um, none of her debuffs will make a massive difference to you in the Ice Golem. She's not going to be able to deal with Wave 2 in any sort of you know, particular fashion other than doing damage. I think she's probably, they got it about right, around a 4. Dragons, I think it's probably about a 4 as well. She's strong there. She can deal with the waves very strongly. 
um, to nuke them and to tank them. It's between four and five for me, but probably a four. Um, Fire Knights, I think, is a stronger dungeon for her. Two multi-hit abilities. Lots of debuffs you actually want to place on the Fire Knight. Deals with the waves really well. Probably a five. Minnows should be rocking minnows. Spiders. I don't know who's putting this number here, guys. The first 20 people that are rated this are wrong. Absolutely a five. Top draw spider champion. Top draw. Very strong. Very strong for me. Arena. Uh, this order. Spider. Arena. Finites for me. Really, really like this champion. The best fusion they've done for a long time for me. Um, all champions in the game together. Job well done, I'd say. Job well done. She's not busted, but she is very cool. Um, and she's not even that chilly for a barbarian. I mean, she's a bit on the chilly side. More like boasting than chilly, I'd say. So, um, once again, Kalari, thanks for letting me use the account. Um, guys, have fun with her. I think she's definitely, definitely worth fusing. It's the first one we've done in a while where I'm like, do it. It is definitely worth your time to fuse this champion if you are capable of doing it. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.